and there is one more um, house on this block it's a small house but it's it's on the edge right here I'll be starting off with that one thing I'll also be doing is adjusting this um, fence as well I think going to be adjusting is mostly the top part. Found a different way to um, get those ridges in. So three. One, two, three. Two, three. One, 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 two, three.
And this is mostly is to space it out just a little bit more. to figure out exactly where the driveway should start. So, two, excuse me, three, four, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, four, four two, three, four, about right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. trying to figure out how long the driveway should be at the moment. Use a t two rows of um, stone as a transition between the driveway and the house itself, since the front door of the house starts is right on the driveway. It opens up right into the driveway, and this is to adjust for sinking down the roads and I did that and I've had to make a few adjustments like this mostly because I thought it would make the roads look a little bit it would make the roads stand out a bit more by sinking them down by one block as opposed to keeping the roads flat So it's mostly an aesthetic choice, but to correct for that aesthetic choice, I end up having to create these transitions right here for some of the houses where the front door is on the um, driveway. The 
house over here is a small house, but it does take a um, pretty good advantage of the design of the house. It is a three ba three room house, one bedroom, one bathroom, and a great room with the kitchen, living, and dining room all in one. But it uses two of the other rooms to sort of break up this the larger great room into sections. So in other words, the kitchen is set off to the side in a sort of nook, which is broken up by the bathroom. And the same thing is true of the living room. There's a door roughly here and the window here looking out into the driveway. window right here looking into the bedroom and this should be the perimeter of the house the bedroom and bathroom and you can see how it does maximize as best it can despite its small size the kitchen which is right here is sort of um, cut off into its own little nook and there's a dining area right here. Right here next to the bedroom. And there's a more small living area right around here. It's not a huge place, but it does a lot with what it has.
And there are two windows. One roughly about here. Not lined up with the window up front. And one about right here. Looking into the kitchen area. For the kitchen, I'll use this. And I don't really have the type of towel for it. Use blue in the bedroom. I'm going to use yellow this time. Maybe that will work. It'll make the yellow really stand out, though. So what I'm going to do is create a checkered pattern. If anything, the white makes the yellow even brighter. So, If this were just a little bit duller, it wouldn't be that far off from what is actually in the Project Zomboid game. In terms of exactly how the tiled kitchen looks, that is. Okay, these two windows back here. And I'll make sure I've got all the windows and doors in now. Bathroom door. No window in the bathroom. Window by the front door. Uh, window into the bedroom. Right in the corner. And bedroom door. Now it's simply a matter of building up the walls and completing the top parts of the frames. Okay, once this window is in, then the windows and all the frames are in for the windows and the doors. And now it's just a matter of placing the roof in and the ceiling. And it's a fairly straightforward roof.
Okay, the roof is almost in. Okay, that takes care of this house, and that's the last house on this block. Not much room for anything else, <laughs> as you can see. But I still need to place in trees and a couple other things. Some patterns in the ground by uh, the uh, um, sand that I need to place in.
I just need to fill this in with sand. Once the spruce trees are in, then I'll start placing down the birch trees. And they're down over on this side, so I'll just grow all of them, just to simplify things. I'll place down birch trees for a contrast and oak trees for somewhat of a contrast but mostly to fill out the areas and again the reason why I do these spruce trees first is that they tend to be a bit finicky if you have other trees around them and place down spruce saplings oak trees and birch trees tend to grow without too much problem Although birch trees do have similar problems to these um, spruce trees. But even when they have the same problems, they tend to grow fairly fast. And the problem is sometimes when you have other trees next to it, they, they don't seem to want to generate in. Or they'll generate in at an increased, increasingly slow pace compared to other trees. Whereas oak trees generally um, can pretty much grow wherever, regardless of whatever's around it. There are some exceptions to that, however. It can displace a lot of things that are above it, except for stone. So you can use stone to limit the height of a oak tree or really any tree that's growing in. So if you don't want a tree to be over a certain height, and as long as the height that you want it at is at a height that it can generate in, then you can place a stone block above where the sapling is and that will limit the type of trees that will generate in the area. It can be most effectively used as a for a tree farm since it's much easier to uh, harvest oak trees that are close and that can be harvested from the ground without having to climb up to get the rest of the wood and oak since oak gen tends to generate probably the fastest among the trees and it's then it's easier to use it as a tree farm tree farming method I placed a video on my YouTube which shows how to set up a tree farm and not just for oak but for other trees as well 
and also shows how to set up a tree tunnel. And that could be found under Sunset Night 2501 on YouTube. Okay, once I've got all the trees in, then I'll go back and start using bone meal on the ground where the grass is supposed to be a bit higher. And once the grass is in, then that will complete this block. And then I'll start working on the houses on the other side of the road. As these trees uh, grow in, it actually becomes a little bit faster for them to generate in, since there's not as many if statements. If a tree can grow, then generate in. If a tree can grow and then the size of the tree, there's fewer if statements to consider. So as a tree farm, or in this case trees grow in, then as I say, it starts getting faster and faster. Relatively speaking. So if you're working on with bone meal to actually grow in trees, sometimes it's easier to actually skip over the oak trees and let them work on their own. They tend to be fast as it is. And just concentrate on the spruce trees and birch trees, depending upon how and when you place those trees in. First time through, I usually just take a look at where grass is fairly high in the game and translate it over. But then I'll just go back behind and take a look at it and see how it looks and add it in depending upon based on how things look in Minecraft. Because in the Project Zomboid game, there's not supposed to be grass around here. I had to decide if that is the look I'm going for or not. Since I have to adjust some things in the game. 
but it should be okay. There's some things I can't do, such as uh, grass or flowers breaking through here without actually removing um, this uh, sand. Because it needs to actually grow something here, you need a dirt. And that it sort of looks a bit odd to do it like that. So in cases like that, I'll just, I'll just bypass doing it. And I'll just um, place the flowers up here. Okay, so that takes care of this block right here. And this is the edge. There's going to be some trees over here. <coughs> and perhaps I should do the parking lot across from this building. And this isn't specifically in the game itself, but in some of the pictures of Project Zomboid on Steam, it that shows pictures of people playing the game. Some there's a picture that have um, this written out. Maybe I should adjust this just a little bit. And that balances out a little bit more. Okay, so there's a sort of parking lot across the road from it. And it looks like it hasn't been maintained in a while. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I put those in backwards. It looks like this parking lot was used for a picnic or maybe for trucks parking across from this um, warehouse.
one, two, three, four, five, six. The pattern here is a bit irregular, so that makes it a little bit odd. And I'm trying to get them to meet together at a certain point. That's why I'm doing it this way.
Now it's just a matter of filling this in in this um, parking lot. There's no specific markings in it. It makes me think this might have been the original parking lot for the warehouse across the street. And now it's just been repurposed for a small park. And there's not really that much to this park, it's just a couple of benches.
I've almost got this. There we go. And I'm just adding these extra touches into it. Such as the sand. As soon as I've done this, then I've got a place in another sand area and a yeah, um, park benches. So they're off in this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen at least. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Basically, this counting out exactly how big this sand area should be. There are two park benches in this small area. Once I place those in, then I'll start placing in the tree line. Okay, the approximation of two benches.
Once I've grown these spruce trees in, then I'll start filling in this small area. I'm only going to go a little ways since I have a house, a couple houses to work on on this area right here. Basically what I'm working on now is the tree line that'll complement this park area a little bit. And this will be the most I'll do for here until I get that um, house in. But it'll give a good idea of exactly how this tree line will go. There's a few more. But like I said, I'll just wait off on that, the rest of that. So I put in it. There's, there's a two-story house that's in the general area. 
And it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but sometimes it's easier just to go ahead and put the house in first before doing too much with the trees, since it can be a problem. But that will give a slight idea how this one sort of works out. Along with this to complement this for right now. And I'm going to take a short break. And I'll be back and start working on the house over here. So in one moment this stream will be back up again. <laughs> 